Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about uh, our WS425 Valley condition. It's pretty common, commonly found on most residences and commercial buildings. Um, so we're gonna walk you through all the installation techniques on this. Uh, so let's get started. This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing where you can find a variety of colors and finishes, all while saving by buying Factory Direct. Use of the following video content is subject to the warning, disclaimer of warranties, and limitation of liability as set forth on this screen. All right, so the first step that you're gonna to wanna to be taking with your valley pan, uh, you wanna make sure that the center of the valley, this little, uh, the actual W of the valley is lined up center with the, uh, the center of the valley itself on your framing. Next step, you're gonna wanna come down to the edge of your bullnose eave that you've already installed and make sure that your, your corners here are lined up. So once all that's in place, you're gonna have to go underneath the valley pan, trace out where your eave trim comes across and all the way through. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit hard to get video of that, but I will get going on that. We'll kind of flip it over and show you guys what we came out with. So we got the whole bottom side of this traced out. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take my square, just kind of line it up here and continue tracing through the actual pan of the valley here. And same thing on this side. Please note that I am using a Sharpie uh, just because this is a little bit harder, a little bit harder material color to actually see a pencil mark on. So typically when you're doing install, you're gonna to wanna to be using a contractor's pencil like usual. Okay. Now that we got that all traced out, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add two inches to the actual W part of the valley. And I'm gonna cut that off somewhat square to start off. Now that we have this all marked out, we're gonna start by cutting, uh, cutting the actual pan of the valley all the way back to here. You don't wanna quite cut into the, uh, to the W of the valley yet. Then we're gonna repeat this process on the same side over here. And uh, then we're gonna work up the actual uh, valley, the W of the valley itself, and get that detailed. Now that that's done, we'll just trim this guy back until we can flip it over. So the whole purpose of leaning, uh, leaving that W in the valley a little bit long, uh, once we flip this over, get it in place, we're actually gonna end up snipping right down the center of this and we're gonna fold it and trim the bottom so it caps off the, the W of the valley so you don't get any bugs or birds or anything like that going up in it. So. Now we can flip it over and keep going. Now that we have the valley pan on the roof, everything's lined out, our corners are good. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the plastic off this, uh, put a couple screws in it to keep it in place, and then I'm gonna address the, the W of the valley there. Now that I have this first section peeled, I'm gonna pin the bottom to make sure this thing doesn't go anywhere on the roof, and then I'm gonna continue peeling the plastic the rest of the way up. Um, there are a few different ways that you can go with the plastic. Some people like to take a um, take a square and actually score the plastic, leave the plastic in the valley. In this particular case, we're just going to peel the plastic and uh, then install, install our panels all the way up. So in this particular instance, since we're just basically installing this on a single pitch roof, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna trace out everything just like I did uh, down here on the bottom. 
Uh, you can leave your, your two inches up there to close off that top and your top peak trim will come together on the corner. Uh, if you're running a valley to valley condition to where there's, uh, for instance, a dormer, you're gonna wanna run the, uh, first of all, fold the top down over the other valley and you're gonna want to run the W of the valley, usually close to two feet long. That way when you come in with your next valley pan, you can run those two W's in together. So we finished uh, trimming up the top of the, of the valley pan. Now we're gonna go through and finish fastening everything down. Uh, we recommend fastening roughly every 12 inches on center on both sides going all the way up. Uh, if your engineer specified something different, I would go with what, the, what your engineer is recommending. Um, so we're just gonna stick with our standard installation for now. Got all the screws installed all the way up, all the way up the panel, roughly every 20 or every 12 inches on center. Uh, next thing we're going to go through, and I'll show you how to address the uh, the W of the valley itself. Get everything closed off, keep all the bugs, birds, stuff like that out of it. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm just going to end up running my square. We're going to make a line coming all the way down this, and the same thing on this other side over here. And from there, you're gonna take your snips. You wanna go right up the high of the valley here. All right, so we're gonna fold our first one under. So one thing that we could do, we can make just a, a rough mark here on our piece. Cover our bottoms there. Snip right across. Oh, and we're going to take our next one, fold that down. First, we'll start with the square cut. From our outside, we're going to fold that down, and we're now going to square cut this one straight up. off the end of the panel. Uh, we just got everything finished up down here on the W part of the valley, closing everything off. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is make our layout for, uh, from the low part of our valley here up to the bottom of the panel. Uh, standard, on a standard color, uh, you're looking at a 48 inch wide uh, or an oversized valley. You'd be looking at 12 and three quarter from the low to the bottom of your panel. This particular color is a, a narrower master coil. So we're actually gonna be running about 10 and a half inches from the low of our valley to the bottom of the panel because we do have a six inch minimum recommendation for the back pan on the actual valley. So I'm gonna use the square here, place it down in the low of the valley and measure up. It's either that or with that six inch measurement, you can run square off the bottom and make your six inch mark here. And then we're gonna do that on all four sides, top and bottom and snap a line I'm also gonna make a mark two inches up because that's where my fasteners are gonna be through the panel. So that's gonna be the center of my mastic. So let's get everything marked out on this. I'm gonna put a, well, that's a W for you. <laughs> uh, an M for mastic. All right, so now that we have everything marked out top and bottom, we're gonna go through uh, and snap two lines with a chalk line. You wanna make sure that you're not using a permanent chalk line. So they have two different or multiple different types and colors of chalk. Um, so just make sure that you're using, typically a blue chalk is not gonna be, um, is not gonna be permanent. You just wanna make sure on the actual bottle itself before you, before you start snapping lines on the metal. Uh, now that we got both of our lines chalked, uh, we're gonna run our mastic up both sides and then we can start paneling all the way across. All 
All right, so now that we have our uh, mastic all laid out uh, across our valleys, we're gonna do the same exact thing. Uh, right now we're using a bullnose eave. Typically, if you're doing a, a fixed eave, you could just use a 90 degree. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna mark two inches up all the way across, mastic that, and uh, then we're gonna start installing panels. Uh, now we have everything installed, all the valleys all, all installed, everything is mastic taped uh, for an exposed fastener valley and exposed fastener eave. Uh, we will go over another application with a bullnose eave and a joggle cleat in a different video, um, but now we are ready to start running our panels out. The following video demonstrates a fixed valley installation. This method is more DIY friendly, however, it is not recommended for most projects, as it pins the panels into place and relies on exposed fasteners. The preferred method is a floating valley, which utilizes a joggle cleat, resulting in concealed fasteners, and allows the panels to move during expansion and contraction. A link to watch our floating valley installation can be found in the description below. We're gonna use the panel. Uh, we're gonna slide it down, not setting it on the mastic, and make a mark on our chalk line for the width of the panel. Uh, you just want to try to make sure that you keep the panel square and check your square as well uh, once everything's said and done. Um, this is going to give us, since we have an 18 inch wide panel, it's going to give us the first start of the angle uh, for when we go to cut the panel. So we're going to get this set up here and start laying it out. Okay, so what I ended up doing, I marked the front. I have a little mark right here on my eave. Um, I also have my chalk line back here. So I marked it both on the chalk line and on the, uh, the high of the panel. All right, so this is our, uh, this line right here in the pan of the panel is actually the line of our, uh, where our chalk line are, is actually meeting the, the edge of the eave. So what I'm gonna be doing is drawing a square line up the high of the panel and then connecting our two angle lines right here to start our angle and cut this little triangle out, um, get everything set and mark out for our, um, our fixed screws on the eave and then also up the valley, which will be two inches up from our cut edge. The fastener spacing depends on the actual width of the panel that you ordered. Um, on this particular 18 inch wide panel, uh, coming across, we'll probably end up going roughly every, every four inches across just trying to make them spaced evenly and then up the valley. Uh, obviously with, as we come more into an angle, it's gonna require more fasteners. So we're gonna start by marking this out. On this, I'm just going to split the difference at three and a half. Just roughly here. Okay, and now we are ready to install this panel. So now that we got this whole first panel marked out, uh, we're going to lay everything up. We're going to pin the top, and then we'll come back through and uh, put all of our screws in at the bottom at the eave. Uh, so one, one important thing to remember when you're installing uh, your washer, your one inch washer screws, is that you are gonna be uh, using a actual drill motor for this, not an impact. Um, so now we're gonna go through and put, put our screws in at all of our marks here. And uh, remember, 
we are using Sharpie on this particular application just so that what, that way you guys can see the color. Um, typically, you're gonna be using pencils so they're not gonna be as visible once all the screws are installed. Uh, so now that we got the first panel down, uh, we're going to end up pretty much repeating the same process for the second one, except this panel is going to be cut, uh, the whole entire panel is going to be cut at an angle. So we're going to set the panel up and we're going to get our male rib up to the blue line again and as in line to this panel as possible and we'll be making two marks on this particular panel. Okay, so once the panel's in place, we're gonna make our, our mark over here on the far edge where our chalk line is, and also on the female rib of this panel. Uh, so now that we got our marks uh, both on this, on this male rib on this panel and also over here, we can actually get our angle from measuring up on our cut edge here to our mark, which is 19 and 7 eighths. And then we know if we square that all the way across the panel, then that's gonna be our point on this next panel. Um, we're also gonna to have to cut this panel down. So we need our overall length, which is 44 and an eighth. You can find step-by-step -step installation videos and homeowner guides on our channel. And don't forget to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribe. Want to learn more? Check out these videos.